As we emerge with AI in this way, we will become a hybrid species. We're going to find solutions to diseases and aging. Around 2032, people who are diligent with their health are going to reach what we call longevity escape velocity. We'll be free to live life without limits. Our intelligence won't be limited by the small size of our skulls and ultimately it will expand a million fold. Let me start by explaining how we're going to connect our brains to the cloud. I think most people fear death, as I do. It's an incredibly lonely concept, and it's tragic when our loved ones die. Even 20, 30, 40 years after they've died, we still want them back. Death is not something to celebrate, but we've lived in a world where people just accept it. You hear it all the time. Oh, life's short. You have to make the most of it. Some people say they don't want to live past 100, but I'd like to see them say that when they are 100. We've convinced ourselves that death is a good thing and gives life meaning. But when we get a life-threatening illness, we become desperate to find a cure. When faced with a choice, people will choose to live. It's only those who are in unbearable physical, mental, or spiritual pain that choose death. We are the species that transcends biology. We have not done that. Our life expectancy would still be 20, which it was a thousand years ago. So overcoming the limitations of biology is not a new story. It's for why I want to live indefinitely. It again comes down to living one day at a time. I want to live to see tomorrow because I want to see my loved ones and I want to continue working on my creative projects. I don't see a time when I would not feel that way. You spend a lot of time pointing out that the humanity will one day achieve immortality. You pointed out that our brain will go to the cloud. They will be able to live there forever. I wonder if we can then talk about immortality. Shouldn't we ask a different question? For example, can such a state be called life? As AI merges with medicine, we're going to find solutions to diseases and aging. At the beginning of the COVID pandemic, Moderna used a range of AI tools to help design and optimize mRNA sequences and discovered the sequence of its successful vaccine in just two days. They also used AI to speed up the manufacturing and testing process, which saved many lives. Biosimulations like these aren't going to be limited to viruses like COVID. With the exponential growth of computation, we'll soon have the ability to rapidly test billions of possible molecular sequences to find cures ultimately for all diseases. By around 2032, people who are diligent with their health are going to reach what we call longevity escape velocity. This is when scientific breakthroughs will add more time to our remaining life expectancy than is going by. Right now, as you live through a year, you get back about four months of life from scientific progress. So you're only losing about eight months of your life expectancy for each year that you live. But as I've said, medicine is advancing exponentially. So by around 2032, we'll be getting back a whole year of life as we live through a year. And after that, we'll get back more than a year back for each year that we live. So we'll be going backwards in time as far as our health is concerned. As we merge with AI in this way, we will become a hybrid species. We'll still be human, but we'll be enhanced by AI. Do you consider people who have cochlear implants or pacemakers or prosthetic limbs to be less alive? Of course not. These are early examples of merging with machines. Our machines are going to continue to shrink in size and gain in power 
to the point where they are invisible and inside our bodies. As we emerge with technology, we will no longer be limited by our biology. We'll be free to live life without limits. People will have own cerebral cortex and an artificial cerebral cortex. Thanks to this artificial cortex, will they be able to search for information just like we do today using Google? Well, let me start by explaining how we're going to connect our brains to the cloud. Nanotechnology is an emerging field that's manipulating materials measured in nanometers. One nanometer is one billionth of a meter. For perspective, the head of a pin is about a million nanometers wide. Scientists are in the early days of figuring out how to build nanorobots, the size of cells that will function like today's robots, sensing data, processing information, taking action, communicating with each other, all on a molecular level. This idea might sound futuristic, but my research shows a steady trend leading to a nanotechnology revolution in the next 15 years. The amount of computation that once took up an entire floor of a building now fits on a smartphone in your pocket. And soon, what now fits in your pocket will fit inside a blood cell and will be far more powerful. In the 2030s and 2040s, Nanobots will swim in our bloodstream. Uh, they'll perform medical tasks with precision, deliver drugs straight to the source, drill through clogged arteries. Ultimately, they will go into our brains non-invasively through our capillaries, provide wireless communication between our neocortex, which is the top layer of our brains, and additional digital neurons hosted in the cloud. Think of it like having your phone, but in your brain. If you ask a question, your brain will be able to go out to the cloud, similar to the way you do on your phone now, only it will be instant, there won't be any input or output issues, and you won't realize it has been done. The answer just will appear in your brain like it is part of you. Some people say they don't want nanobots in their body, but lots of people didn't want to use early cell phones either, yet today they take them everywhere and never leave home without them. Once we connect our brains to the cloud, our intelligence won't be limited by the small size of our skulls, and ultimately it will expand a million fold. Have you ever wondered whether AI will be able to feel pain? The lines between AI and biology are going to blur uh, as we merge together. So it will be difficult to determine whether our pain is felt biologically or digitally. This is similar to the question of consciousness. Will AI be conscious? There's no definitive scientific test that to confirm or deny consciousness. It's a philosophical question. We assume that each of us is conscious, if we seem conscious, but that shared human assumption breaks down as we start to move away from humanity. Some people share the idea that animals are conscious, but not everybody does this, and that's where the whole issue of animal rights comes from. Are insects conscious? There's really no way to prove it. In the future, AI will act as though it is conscious, and therefore we will treat it as though it is.